Hello, it's Bradley J. and welcome to Bradley J. Travel. Today, it's Riga. First, let me say that this video represents the next step in soundtrack creation. I'm increasingly aware of the power of music and soundtracks in film. And I'm going to start experimenting. I'm drawn to Eastern and Central Europe, not really sure why. I guess I like my travel like I like my music. Kind of dark. Melancholy, I guess. Dark in a good way. Here are a few adjectives that come to mind when it comes to my music and my travel. Cobblestone, melancholy, conflict, spies, funky, empty, old school, hotels, um, exotic, trains, trains, and more trains. Let's take a look at the hotel I snagged in Riga. I used to get really cheap hotels, no more. I get really nice hotels that are a good deal. This was Hotel Monica in Riga. And I booked the first night online, which is my habit. But that's the only night I book, and maybe the last night. And I just hope that if I like the hotel, that it will be available for the other nights. This method of operation tends to infuriate travel partners, <laughs> but I don't want to commit to a place that I'm really not sure about. I'm willing to take my chances. This hotel was in a quiet area. It was grand, huge, huge rooms, threadbare a little bit, which I like, very affordable, very chill, very friendly. And it had one itty bitty bar with one seat at the bar which I came to view as my seat. And the sweetest bartender who became a, a good connection for the course of five days. I guess if I'm going to be honest, one of the reasons I like Eastern and Central Europe is that a hotel that's beautiful, spacious, a wonderful environment is much more affordable than in Western Europe. The folks in Riga don't generally like the Russians. And, of course, history is the reason. In 1940, the Soviet army invaded. They had to accept a pro-Soviet government. Then they had a rigged election. How do you know it was rigged? Well, the results were posted in Moscow before the election was over. Then, during the Nazi occupation, the Jewish community was forced into a ghetto, the Riga ghetto, and a concentration camp was set up in a place called Kaiserwald. K-A-I-S-E-R-W-A-L-D. Then, in 1944, the Soviet army re-entered. They came back. When I was describing my travel-like adjectives, I mentioned old school. And check out this wooden architecture in the city, like right in the city. You can almost imagine what Boston was like before brick. Then you have the grand architecture of later on. But then you'll run across these wooden structures. Riga is a Small city, but very open in some areas, as you can see. Lots of nice parkland, waterways, water features, canals. I did not take a ride on those boats, and that was a mistake. Actually, I don't know if 
if a ride was available. So as is my habit recently, prior to going to Riga, I reached out on social media and asked if anybody knew anybody in Riga. And to my surprise, my happy surprise, someone did. And I connected with a woman. She connected me with some friends. And she connected me with this beautiful, cool, art space, performance center, community center, bar, all in one building with this nice deck outside, a place for musical performances, a stage on the second floor. It was definitely a great, great place to hang out. And if I lived there, I would, I would hang out there. Fantastic. I went there, I think, three nights out of five. This table was part of the decor. Cool, right? And here's the woman that I connected with and who showed me around and introduced me to her friends. The people that I met in Riga were not big fans of Russia. As a matter of fact, Riga is so close. I tried to convince one of them to drive into Russia, but she said, no way. I don't like going there. I don't even like visiting my relatives there. And they're scared to death that Russia is going to invade them. Speaking of Russia, I mean, the Russian culture has a, a big impact on Latvia, as is evidenced by this Russian restaurant. Having been to Moscow, I have a sense of what Russian restaurants and what Russia is all about. And it did feel very Russian. A lot of people did not speak English, but a lot of people did. And that's part of the fun, figuring out what's up. If you come across somebody that does not speak English, just nod politely and find somebody that does. I actually find it kind of a bonding experience to transact a transaction with somebody that does not speak English. These final images as we wrap up here are from a day trip outside of Riga. And at the time I didn't think it was worth it, but now I love these images and I'm glad I went. Can't recommend it enough. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And as always, travel lightly.